Pierre, in terms of the new fund, tell me a little bit more about it. Uh, good morning, Francie. Uh, the new fund is a European long short fund uh, and it does what it says on the box with it long and short equities and mm -hmm. um, it's uh, trying to um, take advantage of companies which are performing well and being short the market or being short beta risk so that we can really focus on purely uh, individual companies. Pierre, are you not concerned? I mean, we talk about contagion practically every day. I have investors coming on the show saying, you know, I'm so afraid of what's going on because we're not sure whether the European, you know, politicians can deal with the crisis. How brave do you have to be to launch a new European fund at a day where actually we don't really know how the European debt crisis will end? I think the bravest people are the politicians who have to deal with the crisis, so uh, I admire what they're doing. And I think uh, the fund uh, specifically is market neutral, so what it does try to do is really to not try to take risk or to take views of what's happening outside of uh, individual companies. And interestingly enough, over the last 10 years, we've managed to find companies who can pull their weight whatever happens. Now, it's not fully protected, but that's why you also short some and long orders so that you give yourself a possibility to make money in these markets which are really very, very difficult indeed to find the direction. And it's difficult, yeah, to, to find actually the, the asset that will give you good returns. Pierre, how big is your fund and what are you looking to buy at first? Well, the fund uh, is looking to raise probably half a billion. We had um, uh, similar successful uh, European long short funds uh, which have closed at more than one billion. And so I think that's a very, very um, good start. And there's a lot of different companies. The fund has existed uh, for 10 years as an onshore, uh, offshore product. And now we bring it in onshore usage. Uh, and there's plenty of investment. It's more than 600 companies in the fund. And so you're looking basically at equities. You're not, you're not buying European bonds or anything crazy no. like that. <laughs> no, it's not that it's crazy. It's that when you analyze the risk, uh, I find better return for the risk in that equities. I can take in specific equities, which are slightly less affected uh, from what's going on. Yeah, I, I think anyone who would be buying European bonds at the moment, though, would have to have a very strong stomach. Yeah. In terms of sectors that you're actually buying into are the ones that are, are scaring you the most in Europe, which are the ones that you're staying away from? I think the ones which are the most linked to uh, contagion from uh, what's happening at the sovereign level. So, which means by default, you want to look at the sectors where you want to focus, and that would be industrials, uh, that we exporting companies, uh, oil companies as well energy companies, all these things where you would dominate much more about what's happening in the world, uh, which is still very, very dangerous, but, uh, and less about the European sovereign uh, or European financials. Uh, what about banks? Because we're, we're going on to the stress test, and again, we're, we're finding out that although they have prepared for this a long time, if Italy were to go next, a lot of the banks are under extreme pressure, especially the Italian banks. Yeah, they are indeed, and it's, uh, it's, it's really very, very difficult to analyze them right now. And so therefore, we try to spend more time on other companies where we find it's more, um, you know, it, it, it's slightly more logical uh, over the medium term. It's more readable, where banks are much less easy uh, to analyze. There might be extraordinary return captured by that too, but we find the risk return is better in other sectors for us now. And so it is, again, it's the sectors that basically are exposed to the emerging markets and the U.S., or again, are you concerned of what's happening with the debt crisis in the U.S.? Well, we're concerned about everything. That's our job. And, you know, when you long short, you see problems everywhere because uh, uh, you have to protect yourself. So it's, it's in every sector. So there's no sector in particular. And even in some other sectors where there are trouble, like in financial friends, when you accept that you should be a trader as well as an investor, that's where you can really take advantage of situation. Not all the time, but, um, you know, you just need to be right on average 60% of the time to make money. But again, what are you shorting, for example, at the moment? Is it country specific plus sectors? I mean, how do you make your investment decision? Do you look at specific companies or do you say, well, they're so exposed to Europe and to Spain, and Greece in particular, that I want to stay away from this company? We find that right now the risk of individual shorts, individual companies is way too high and of individual sectors also. So it's probably more attractive to be having macro shorts and having the longs on individual companies and having macro short. That's how we prefer to manage the risk this year. And it's been successful so far. And I think it's going to continue to be successful. Talk to me a little bit about how focused you are on earnings season. So when you have to choose your investment strategy, what is the, the multiple factors that you look at the most to make the possible best investment for your clients? Earnings are really critical and um, as you know we're very fundamental you know, on the side of the shop and we spend a lot of time in modeling earnings and it's not really the next quarter but it's really the next year and uh, what we focus right now is really earnings revision. So we really are really hunting for companies that have the capability 
to have the earnings being revised on the upside. Mm -hmm. uh, we find there's going to be a much more powerful engine of excess return than re-rating or value uh, or cyclicality at the moment. And so what about, how influenced are you, I guess, by you know, the company CEO, so how the, the company is managed, although it will be difficult that the person in charge is taking the right steps, and how focused are you on dividends? Very focused on company CEO and company CFO and the way that these two interact, and also in the UK with the chairman, uh, it's really on, on the governance and really uh, how important it is. It's, it can't be underestimated how these guys are going to steer, uh, you know, the business to these very troubled waters, as you explain. And, and I think when, you know, I was in Paris last week at a birthday party, and one of the company's CFO explained to me that, you know, when he spent time with a GLG analyst, is he learns more about his business than with anybody else. And for me, that's the best compliment ever. So that's really the kind of relationship that we build with people uh, over the last 25 years, in a way. It's really to to be able to work on, on modeling, on, 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 on trying to predict what the next couple of years are going to be in terms of numbers. Mm -hmm. And dividends focused or not so focused because it's just a short-term gain? Uh, it's not a short-term gain, it's quite important. For instance, we've got a lot of companies right now, we've got growth of business and dividend, which is attractive compared to bond yield. So, uh, you know, the, the relative attraction of one factor is something that's cyclical. You know, for some periods it's dividend, for some other periods it's value, other periods earnings growth. Right now we're much more interested in earnings growth. I think the dividend you can be fooled to by how sustainable the dividend would be. So you have to do the same work of trying to predict the sustainability of the dividend, which is basically going back to the earnings work. Now, Pierre, you know, earlier on the show, we were talking really about how Man Group was very focused on the, the trading model through computers, so not really having a human money manager. How do these two differ? And I, I know we've talked about it a little bit in the break, and you say there's nothing, you know, it, not one is better than the other, but they're certainly so difficult and so different that one needs to be better to react to news. Well, it depends on the environment, and I think the, the way that we run the money at JLG, everybody focuses on what they're very strong, and we've got a lot of psychological behavior analysis where, you know, it's like an athletics team. You don't push some athletes in the 100 meters. They're different than the one you put for the 5,000 meters. So the quantitative uh, work that man has got to HL is fantastic, and uh, it does things we can't do. Same way as on the active side, we do think uh, that, that they can't, and it's, it's not a question of what's better. It works very well. It's quite working well together actually it's very uncorrelated return so as a portfolio it works really beautifully uh, you know you talk about the psychological impact of course this is something that we saw after Lehman Brothers uh, where you know the, the markets lost so much confidence that it really collapsed the whole system are you concerned that we're going to see a similar thing if not with Europe if one goes under if a country goes under after Greece but if also the US doesn't manage to get that debt ceiling under control I think, in, in a way, it, it's, it's a more worrying environment than ever because there's so many things happening at the same time. Mm -hmm. But we also have the relatively recent memory from 2008 to see that, uh, you know, there is a solution when there is a problem. And it might entail a lot of damage, but eventually, you know, there will be a solution to be found. And uh, which I think right now what's extraordinary is that usually you've got the problems that you don't know about. And right now, there's so many problems on the table that uh, everything is very visible, or virtually everything. So it's not a question of how we're going to address the problem, but the problems are known. Yeah, it's a very different known. environment yeah. Than, yeah. than what we usually have. But how much risk do you take? Is it, do, do you promise your clients a certain return in a couple of years? I'm going to be no. in trouble with my compliance officer. We never <laughs> promise. <laughs> it's better. You can only look at, you know, is, is there any reason for the way we work to be more or less successful in the future. And I don't see from the current markets that uh, it's going to be less successful. 